Previously, we saw what sorting is and why it is so important. In this video, we will introduce one of the simplest of sorting algorithms, the bubble sort. Welcome to Code Station. We've all seen a carbonated drink bubble up. In a glass of soda, we could observe that usually the larger bubbles arrange themselves towards the top and eventually pop off. Smaller bubbles are formed towards the bottom of the glass. This is the exact concept that bubble sort uses to sort elements in an array. This is the bubble sort algorithm. Let's say we have an array of size n. There are two loops, rounds and iterations under each round. We will have n minus 1 round in total, starting from 1 and ending at n minus 1. Similarly, we will have n minus round iterations under each round. In the first round, for example, we will have n minus 1 iterations. Similarly, in the third round, we will have n minus 3 iterations. In each of these iterations, we will conduct two operations, comparison of two adjacent element and, if necessary, swap. Here, swap refers to moving the content of one array element to another and vice versa. We have kept our algorithm very general here. Notice how we have not specified any implementation for the compare function. The compare function can do a simple comparison of ascending or descending magnitude, or it could do a more advanced compare with multiple sorting criteria like we have understood from my previous introduction to sorting video. For a simple example that is going to follow, we are sorting elements in an ascending order. Therefore, the compare function is just comparing the magnitudes of the elements. These operations for the upcoming examples can be summarized as this. Here, the array elements get swapped if the previous element is greater than the current element. Let's look at an example. We have been given an 8 element array and have been asked to sort it in an ascending order. For the fun of it, let's arrange these numbers as bubbles. The size of the bubble denote the magnitude of the number. Our task at hand is to order the bubbles so that the larger bubble move towards the top and pop. Let's begin our loop round 1 and iteration 1. We are looking at the index 0 element and index 1 element. Is the element at index 0 greater than at index 1? Yes. So let's swap them. Moving on to iteration 2 at round 1. Is the element at index 1 greater than at index 2? No. So no swapping necessary. Round 1 iteration 3. Element at index 2 greater than at index 3? Yes. Let's swap them. Round 1 iteration 4. Element at index 3 is greater than at 4. So let's swap. Iteration 5. Again, let's swap. Iteration 6. Obviously, element at 5 needs to move to 6. So let's swap. Iteration 7. Again, swapping is required. So we have completed the n-1, which is 8-1, that is 7 iterations for round 1. Notice how the largest element in this array, 91, is moved towards the rightmost index. The largest bubble has reached the top, so let's pop it. Now, we move on to round 2. The first iteration begins with first and the second element comparison. Is swapping necessary? No. So let's move on. Round 2, iteration 2. Swapping is necessary, and so it's done. Round 2, iteration 3, swapping is done. In this fashion, at the end of round 2, the largest bubble is again moved towards the top. The bubble pops. Notice how the 6th index has the second largest element and the 7th index has the largest element. In round 3, we require 5 iterations and comparisons to move the next highest number, 76, to index 5. In round 4, we do 4 iterations in a similar way. In round 5, we need 3 iterations only. In round 6, we need only 2. And finally, in round 7, we do 1 iteration to pop off all our bubbles. What we get is a sorted array. Index 0 will have the smallest number 20. Index 1 will have the next highest 33. Index 2 will have 45 and so on. 
Therefore, we can see that for each round we iterated n minus round times. For the first round, we iterated 7 times. For the second round, we iterated 6 times. Third round, we iterated 5 times. Fourth round, we iterated 4 times. Fifth round, 3 times. Sixth round, 2 times. And seventh round, we iterated 1 time. Therefore, we got our sorted list in total of 28 iterations. So if n equals to 8, we have to iterate 28 times. How could we get a general expression for this? Well, let's pictorially depict these iterations with each dot representing each iteration. Viola, these dots are assuming a shape of a right angle triangle. Let's bring a transformed triangle with exactly the same number of dots and join these two together. What do we get? A rectangle made of the dots with length of n and width of n minus 1. Obviously, the area of this rectangle is n times n minus 1, which means that it is composed of n times n minus 1 dots. Thus, the number of dots in our triangle is half the number of dots in this rectangle, that is n times n minus 1 divided by 2. This means that for an array with n elements, we will iterate n times n minus 1 divided by 2 times. Asymptotically, this complexity is in the order of n square. A n square time complexity is not very practical in the modern world. A social networking site, for example Facebook, has millions of users. Obviously, they need to have their users sorted for all their other algorithms. If they were to use bubble sort for sorting, they would have to do 1 trillion iterations. Yes, that is 12 zeros. Practically, even if insertion sort has the same asymptotical time complexity, it is nearly always faster than bubble sort. So why did we even go through this algorithm if it is that useless? Well, historically, bubble sort was the first algorithm that was well researched and understood. It is easy to understand and calculate the space and time complexity for. Therefore, it is the first sorting algorithm introduced to the beginners. Moreover, imagine if you had a machine where the data to be sorted is contained in a file on a tape. Well, you'd pretty much have to travel back in time to have that. In the tape, you can only read or write forward. Let's say your computer does not have an actual RAM. So, you can read two items from the tape at once. You can either choose to leave them as they are or swap them. Once you've finished processing one pair of records, you can move the tape forward by one record and look at the two records there. When you reach the end of the file, you can rewind the tape to the beginning and repeat as often as you need. For this sorting machine, bubble sort would be ideal. But for other modern computers, bubble sort is not recommended to be used at all. In the following episodes, we will look into other sorting algorithms which are faster compared to the bubble sort. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, please comment here and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Also don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.